If you're struggling to clear your lungs because you feel there is stuck mucus that you can't cough up, then this video is for you. Please visit your physician if you have pain or if you're coughing up unusually coloured mucus or if you've had a cough for more than two weeks. This video will give you strategies to help you clear your lungs and airways. Number one, hydration. Make sure you're not dehydrated as this can make the mucus thicker and harder to shift. Our airways are lined with delicate cells that have little hair-like projections called cilia. Cilia constantly shift debris and excess mucus out of our airways. This impressive natural clearance and defense mechanism is called the mucociliary escalator. So remember, stay hydrated to help shift the mucus up the escalator. The next bit of advice is to stop smoking and also avoid vaping and inhaling any other chemicals which may irritate your airways. The chemicals from vaping and especially smoking can cause the cilia to become paralyzed, which is a bit like switching off the escalator. Poor air quality can also be a contributor. So make sure you avoid these things and try to breathe clean air. The color of your expectorated sputum, that's what your coughed up mucus is called, is also a sign of a potential cause. Green or yellow mucus is a sign of an infection and orange, rusty brown or dark red sputum should be investigated by your medical physician or your GP. One of the most well used mucus clearance techniques is the three phase active cycle of breathing technique. Let's have a look at how to do it. Number one, take five relaxed breaths, slowly breathing in through your nose and out through pursed lips to create a bit of positive pressure, which helps with your exhalation. You should feel your abdomen rise during inhalation while the chest remains relaxed. The next phase is the thoracic expansion exercises. Hold around your lower ribs so you can feel them expand with a long inhalation, again through your nose, followed by a long exhalation out of the mouth. And repeat this thoracic expansion exercise up to five times. The next phase is the forced expiratory technique. Take a full breath in through the nose and then force the air out through your mouth to create a huffing action. This is also known as the huff cough and you may have seen our shorter video on the huff cough here on the channel. You can also vary the technique by taking a long breath in followed by a half huff out. or take a shorter breath in, followed by a long huff out. During or after the active cycle of breathing technique, you should find it easier to cough up your trapped mucus. <coughs> you may also be able to try some manual therapy in the form of percussion, but doing these techniques should be under the guidance of a medical practitioner or respiratory physiotherapist, for example. Now, a percussion technique looks like this. We take a towel to place over the patient to absorb the force when we're performing the percussion. The percussion that you do is going to shake the rib cage and therefore also provide some movement and uh, shaking to the airways as well, which can help to loosen the secretions. So starting over the lower ribs, which would be over the lower lungs, can then move up to the middle of the thorax, which would be the middle part of the lung, and then also the upper as well. And following this, it would be a good idea to sit the patient up and see if that's loosened off some of the secretions by asking them to either do the huff, cough, or to see if they want to do a standard cough to try and cough up some secretions. <coughs> it's also possible to perform the percussion with some forced expiratory flow. Once again, percussion is usually done by a respiratory nurse or physiotherapists, and it is often taught for patients or their family or carers 
to do as well. So it is possible for you to do percussion, but it is advised that you get some advice before trying it. Anyway, I hope this element of the video was helpful. Should you be advised to try some percussion, hopefully it will be useful for you. As you can see, it's quite simple to do. Uh, and the advice is to use a towel with a few layers in order to absorb the force and combining it with that forced expiratory flow can really help to loosen the secretions. Let's move on to see what else you can do to help loosen the secretions, clear your airways and clear your lungs. You may find it helpful to use a lung expansion and mucus clearance device. I'll put a link in the description below for the one that we're using here. And these inexpensive devices can be helpful for clearing stuck mucus or what we call stuck secretions. Here we're using a device called the Air Physio. So here are the instructions for using this device. Take a deep breath and hold it for two to three seconds. Place the device in your mouth and blow out into the device for three to five seconds. with a consistent breath. Do not try to blow too hard as the ball bearing should just lift off the cone, breaking the seal. So as you can see in the device here, if I take the top off, there's a ball bearing over the top of the air tube. And as Richard breathes out, that ball bearing will be lifted up. If he breathes out at a certain pace, the ball bearing will rise up and then fall down again. And that will change that expiratory pressure and cause what we call a oscillating positive expiratory pressure as the ball flutters up and down and creates a fluttering of the ex exhaled air and therefore a fluttering and vibration like feeling in the lungs. Now if Richard doesn't blow hard enough the ball will rise but it won't flutter. If he blows too hard the ball will just rise up and stay up and he won't get that fluttering and vibration. So he needs to breathe in the correct way, as in the correct speed. And the other thing he needs to take note of is the angle of the device. If it's too horizontal, the ball will not be fluttering. And if it's too vertical, sometimes that can affect the technique as well. So it's the speed of your exhalation, the speed of your outbreath, and the angle of the device, which will determine how helpful and how successful this technique is for you. It's advised that you use the device 10 times, two times per minute for five minutes, or for a more relaxed approach, once per minute for 10 minutes. Because you're doing repeated deep breathing, if you find you get lightheaded, stop doing the technique and wait until you feel normal again. If you keep getting lightheaded when you do the technique, stop using the device and make sure you get some further medical advice. So we hope you found these techniques helpful. Please let us know in the comments box below which ones you found the most helpful and perhaps share any other tips that you might have with our viewers as well. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the Physio channel. There's some other videos showing on the screen here which you may find helpful. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.